Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Sitat Khan and I will be explaining the solution of exercise 1a, the questions from 1 to 10 in this video. The questions that we will be discussing is from Unit 1 of Pure Mathematics 1 uh, Cambridge level exams and the topics are coordinates, points and lines. Exercise 1, problems and their solutions. So the first question is asking you to find out the lengths of line segments that is joining two points and the points are given in the questions from A to J. So the first thing in the solution we need to know is the formula for the lengths of joining two points. So if you are given x1, y1, one point, and another point is x2, y2, then the formula is given by d is equals to the square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. If you are given a point a, which is 2 and 5 and b, 7 and 17, then we can see that x1 is 2, y1 is 5, x2 is 7 and y2 is 17. So in the above formula, if we substitute the values <coughs> for x1, y1, x2, y2 and so if we substitute the values of x1, y1, x2 and y2 in the above formula, then we get 7 minus 2 whole square plus 17 minus 5 whole square this gives us 7 minus 2 gives us 5 the square of 5 is 25 and 17 minus 5 gives us 12 and the square of 12 is 144 if you add them that gives us 169 and the square root of 169 is 13 part b says that a is minus 2 and 2 and point b is 1 and minus 1 so that means x1 is minus 2, y1 is 2, x2 is 1, y2 is minus 1. Just substitute the values in the formula x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square and take its square root. You can see that this 1 plus 2 gives us 3, the square of 3 is 9. Minus 1 minus 2 gives us minus 3, the square of minus 3 is 9. So that gives us 18. 18 is actually 2 times nine and by the rule we can write this as two and we know that then the square root of nine is three so that gives us three square root two similarly you can try part c part d part e is a little bit different because they have mentioned uh, a and b variables the values that we don't know so x1 is 2a y1 is a x2 is 10a y2 is minus 14a. Just substitute the values. x2 is 10a minus x1 is 2a. y2 is minus 14a and y1 is a. So 10a minus 2a gives us 8a and the square of 8 is 64a square. Similarly, this gives us minus 15a. So the square of 15 is 2 to 5 and the square of a is a square. And when you add them up, that gives us 289a square. So the square root of 289 is 17 and the square of a is 2. f is again a little different. It's a plus 1 and 2a plus 3 and b is minus a minus 1 and 2a minus 1. So just substitute the values a minus 1 minus a minus 1. So this is your x2 minus you have x1 is a plus 1 so if you sub multiply a minus with a plus this becomes minus and if you multiply this minus to this plus this becomes minus y2 is 2a minus 1 right and y1 is sorry y2 is 2a minus 1 and y1 is 2a plus 3 so 2a minus 1 minus minus 2a and minus into plus 3 gives us minus 3 so 
minus a plus plus a minus a plus a cancel each other that gives us minus 2 the square of minus 2 is 4 2a and minus 2a cancel out each other and that gives us minus 4 the square of minus 4 is 16 if you add them that gives us 20 20 is actually 4 times 5 which means the square root of 4 square root of 5 and the square root of 4 is 2 so that gives us 2 square root 5 g is similar h is again similar uh g you can try all of these and i hope it would be clear now question two says that show that the points a b c and d are vertices of a parallelogram so the vertices of parallelogram means that the size or the length of parallel sides would be equal so this side is parallel to this one so the size it should be equal and this is parallel to this one so it should be equal so we have to look for <coughs> excuse me two sides which are equal so these sides should be equal and these sides should be equal so we need to find out the lengths a b b c c d and a d right so a b is again by distance formula you have this x1 y1 x2 y2 so just substitute the values in the formula 6 minus 1 whole square plus minus 1 minus minus plus 2 whole square that gives us 5 the square of 5 is 25 and this gives us 1 the square of 1 is 1 which gives us square root 26 now if you look at the c and the d now again you can call this x1 this y1 x2 y2 and now substitute the values 4 minus 9 whole square plus 2 minus 3 whole square this gives us minus 5 the square of minus 5 is 25 and this gives minus 1 the square of minus 1 is 1 that is 26 so we have found out we have two sides they are equal now let's find out other two sides and see whether they are equal or not so if you find out bc b and c according to the formula that gives us 5 and if you find out a and d that gives us again 5 so it means that they are equal so ab is equal to cd and the length bc is equal to ad that means that abcd is a parallelogram next question says that show that the triangle formed by the points this this and this is isosceles isosceles means that any of the two sides are equal these two can be equal or these two can be equal or these two can be equal so we have to check for the two distances and find out if we, if we can find out two distances between these points are the same so first we find out the distance between a b and again using the same above formula we find out that we find we find out that this the value is square root 50 now if we find out the distance between b c that gives us square root 160 and then when we find out the distance of a c according to the above formula it gives us square root 50 so these two are the same it means we have two lengths equal to each other that is then the property of an isosceles triangle so a b is equal to a c therefore a b c d is an isosceles triangle question number four says that show that the points a b and c lie on a circle with the center zero is equal to two n and zero <clears throat> so we know that if you have a circle at any point in here that point is zero and two then any point on the circle will have the same radius a b or c so if there lies if these points lie on the circle 
it means that they all should be the same because the radius is all the same throughout the circle so we have to use this property and check if this property is satisfied it means they lie on the circle if any one of these three are not equal then this is not these are not lying on the circle so if we find out oa this is our origin and this is our a so the distance between these two is 13 using the distance formula when we find out the distance between o and b the distance is again 13 and if you find out the distance between o and c that's also 13. so all the distances are the same it means that they lie on the circle or with the center to zero question number five says that find out the midpoints of the line segment joinings joining the pair so the formula for the midpoint is if you are two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 the midpoint is that you add the x coordinates and the y coordinates you add the x coordinates divided by two you add the y coordinates and divide the divide that by two to find out the two coordinates of the midpoint so if you are given a which is 211 b 615 then putting that values substituting these values in the midpoint formula for x1 we put 2 for x2 we put 6 and add them and divide by 2 for y1 we put 11 for y2 we put 15 we add them and divide this by 2 so 6 2 plus 6 gives us 8 divided by 2 11 plus 15 gives us 26 divided by 2 8 divided by 2 is 4 and 26 divided by 2 is 13 so that is the midpoint of point a and b similarly the other parts are given a b uh, b c uh, d then e e is a little bit different that you have the values in terms of p so again you add the x coordinates divided by 2 and you add the y coordinates and divide them by 2 so p plus 2 plus 3p plus 4 divided by 2 3p minus 2 plus p minus 5 divided by 2 add the p's and add, add the constants so p plus 3p is 4p and 2 plus 4 is 6 divided by 2 3p plus p is 4p and minus 2 minus 5 gives us minus 6 divided by 2 in the first one there is two common in 4p and 6 so if you take that out this two will cancel out with this so you are left with 2p plus 3 and there is nothing common in the second coordinate so you just leave it as it is similarly is part f and then part g and part h let's go to question number six they're asking you that if a is minus two and one and b is six and five are the opposite ends of a diameter of a circle so it means you have a circle and you have a diameter on one side you have a on the other side you have b find the coordinates of its center that is the midpoint of ab which means you have to find out this we have to find out o which is x and y you can call it o x and y or p x and y so and that is the midpoint between a b is the midpoint of a b so a o or o a should be the same as o b or b o so midpoint formula using these two two points we can find out the midpoint of these two is minus 2 plus 6 divided by 2 comma 1 plus 5 divided by 2 so that point is 2 and 3 which is the midpoint of AB. Okay, question number seven. So you are given the midpoint is five and seven of a line segment which is joined, it is the joining of A and B. So you are given A and you are given B, the values, and they are asking you that this is the midpoint. So find out the coordinates of B, which means you have to find out X and Y. If this is the midpoint then we know the formula of midpoint is 
x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. They have the two points, just substitute the values. x1 is minus 2 plus x2 is x divided by 2, y1 is 1 and y2 is y divided by 2, and that is the midpoint, so you put that equals to 5 and 7. This means that this x axis x coordinate is equal to the x coordinate of the right hand side and left hand side of the y coordinates is equal to the right hand side the left coordinate the y coordinate of the right side so minus 2 plus x divided by 2 is equal to 5 and 1 plus y divided by 2 is equal to 7 both sides divided by 2 and then take the constant to the other side and you get find out the value of x in y which is 12 and 13. Question number 8 is asking you that you are given a, b, c and d and they are the vertices of a parallelogram. So verify that the midpoints of the diagonals a, a, c and b, d coincide. So if you are given if you are given a parallelogram these are the diagonals and they are asking you to find out that both of the diagonals coincide at one point so the midpoint of AC and the midpoint of BD should be the same so we know the formula of midpoint we find out the midpoint of AC that gives us 5 comma 1 over 2 and when we find out the midpoint of BD using the midpoint formula that is again the same so this means that the midpoints of diagonals AC and BD coincide question number 9 is asking you which of the points A, B and C is the midpoint of the other two so we have three points and one of these points is the midpoint of the other two. If we find out AB, the distance between the midpoint between the midpoint of AB, so we find that we find that it's 11 by 2 and minus 1 by 2. Now, if we find out the distance between the midpoint between PC, that is 5 and 2. And we can see that 5 and 2 is the point A. So this means that the midpoint of BC is point A or point A is the midpoint of the point B and C. And the last part is question number 10 which includes uh, different parts. So you need to find out the gradient G of the line joining a pair or pairs of points. So the gradient is given by y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. You can take any any of the point x1, y1 and the other you can call it x2, y2. So if you have a and b and if you call this x1, y1, this x2, y2, then putting that values in the formula y2 minus y1, 12 minus 8 divided by x2, 5 minus x1, 3, subtract them that gives us 4 divided by 2 and that is 2 so that means the gradient is 2. Now you can take any of the parts part b is again you have two points c you have two points you can find that out point d is again simple points you can find the gradient point e is again using uh, p points uh, which is not just a number but there are variables p in it so you can add them up and you can find out the gradient so you can see that y2 is minus p minus 5 minus y1 which is p minus 3 so if you multiply minus to p that gives us minus p and if you multiply minus to minus 3 that gives us plus 3 and similarly for the x ones then you can see that minus p minus p is minus 2p minus 5 plus 3 gives us minus 2 and then 2p minus p is p and 4 minus 3 is 1 and then you can see that they cancel each other so you are left with minus 2. Similarly you can do the f1, the g and the h1 is again very simple.